I am super excited to introduce to you something that you either never heard of or don't know much about, and that's blood flow restriction training. It's also known as BFR training. And it does sound scary. I know <laughs> restricting the flow of blood in your body. Why in the world would you do that? Well, the list is long and I personally do it because as we lose our estrogen with menopause, we find it so much harder to build muscle as we age. And, and it's not to be like a bodybuilder. It's, it's to not be frail and it's to bounce back when we fall. And if we do get injured, we can keep our muscle mass to recover faster, but there is so much more to BFR. And, and we're going to take a real deep dive into it all with my guest, Stephen Munatonis, who is the CEO of the Rolls Royce of VFR bands called Katsu. Stephen is American, um, but he spent a lot of time in Japan where he met Dr. Yoshiaki Sato, who invented the original BFR Katsu bands back in 1966. To, heal, to, to basically heal people with all kinds of ailments. And for years, Dr. Sato, alongside with some cardiologists at the University of Tokyo Hospital, tested and researched the product with over 7,000 cardiac rehab patients. Now, Stephen decided that the world needs to hear more about BFR bands, and he went on to co-found Katsu Global with Dr. Sato. And now doctors and athletes, the military, bodybuilders, patients in recovery, and biohackers are going crazy for Katsu because it can be used to help build and maintain muscle, improve stem cell concentration, boost testosterone and collagen, lower neuropathic pain, improve brain health, blood circulation, and bone health. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> so there is so much to unpack here, but we will concentrate on building and maintaining muscle for women going through menopause and perhaps talk a little bit about the beauty benefits too. Now, before we start, I have to read that fancy disclaimer that statements included in this interview have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, and this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Now, without out of the way, without further ado, let's meet Stephen Minotones. Welcome. Hello, good morning or good evening, wherever you are around the world. How did I pronounce your name, my last name correctly? Uh, it's very good, but it's properly pronounced Muñatones. Muñatones. Okay. What? That sounds Spanish. Yes, it's Basque, Northern Spain. Oh, got it. Okay, good. I wasn't too far. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So your background is amazing. We had a chat before this um, several months ago, and I was just blown away. It would probably take a whole another hour just learning more about you and your journey to Japan and how you discovered Katsu. So tell us like in a nutshell, how you found Dr. Sato and why you decided to bring Katsu BFR to the world. Very shortly, I was part of a 22nd century project in Japan, which looked forward 100 years. So the year 2200 or two, I'm sorry, 2100. And Dr. Sato and I were, were part of that. Um, I visited his office through an introduction. I was completely blown away by what he was doing at the day that I first visited him. It's a long line of, of Japanese older people. And he was treating each of them. He got to me and I had waited in line and it was, it blew me away what he did with me. And at the time, I wasn't thinking about myself, business, et cetera. I was actually thinking about my aging parents. And I asked Dr. Sato very quickly, um, how do I learn how to do this? And he said, oh, I've been waiting for someone like you, a, an American who speaks English and uh, speaks, read, and write Japanese. And I said, great, oh, wonderful. And he said, um, I'll teach you. And I said, thank you very much. Uh, do you have a book? Do you have something that I could read, understand um, as I travel back to Southern California? And he said, no, it's all <laughs> in my head. Oh my so for the next 13 years, I trained under him, his team of cardiologists, and I took everything from his Japanese mind and translated it into English, learning along the way, and here we are. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy you did this <laughs> because 
it is really something amazing. And if it weren't for you, I don't know really who would. And and you are so unique in the sense that you you speak Japanese and you read and write in, and that's not a whole lot of English speakers doing that. So thank you for doing that. Um, so over the years, what have you found out that that the science has proven that BFR training can do for someone's health? And and what's the difference between sort of the general BFR bands and the katsu bands? So BFR. Um as it relates to katsu is actually a misnomer. What we're actually doing with the bands, which I see them on your arms themselves, uh, although they look like a tourniquet or a blood pressure cuff, they're actually keeping the blood in the limbs, not mm. out of the limbs. So arterial flow, or what we call the blood going from the torso out to the arms or legs, that arterial flow remains unimpeded. It's not occluded, it's not being cut off. What the bands do is they inflate and deflate gently and progressively, I might add, is actually slow down the uh, venous flow or the flow from the hands and feet back to the torso. What that um, effectively does, and that's what the equipment does, that doesn't do anything else. It effectively engorges the vascular tissue, the capillaries, veins, and arteries with blood. If we think, and this is this is the big leap here, Dr. Sato, the cardiologists consider the vascular tissue, our small capillaries, our veins, and our arteries. So the arteries take the blood into the limb, and the veins bring the blood back out. That is a muscle, and just like your biceps or quadriceps, we can develop that muscle. Now, when we're children, that muscle is very elastic. So we can run all day long if we're a, when we're a kid and when we're 90, we don't have that stamina. But keeping that vascular tissue as elastic as possible is the catalyst for a bunch of other things that happen down line. So Dr. Sato created a very simple um, set of bands. We refined it over the years. We learned how tightly to put it on, how uh, where to put it on, how long to use it, et cetera. And then that, the whole purpose of this was strengthening or increasing the elasticity of capillaries and veins, which leads to, for example, a robust hormonal response. So that in a nutshell is what katsu is and how it differs from the term BFR or blood flow restriction. Yeah. And, and so it also, as I understand, th this this cycling that happens, right? And then this is this yeah. is part of the the technology that you don't get with a set of bands you'd buy just like a glorified tourniquet on Amazon um, or something with a pump that you pump yourself. It just stays inflated all the time. And, and, and you have that function, but it's that to me and what I've noticed the difference is that's a huge difference and it's not uncomfortable because if I have it on constant, uh, you know, with the 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 other you know, bands that I used to have, it was really painful to get through. And then there are contraindications. So I've done a podcast review, uh, a podcast interview with um, uh, Dr. Chris Gaviglio talking about BFR, and he has a whole podcast about the benefits of BFR. But he said, yeah, you need to be careful if you have um, certain heart conditions, you need to qualify. This is not for people in their 90s. Whereas you has explained to me, that there, this is made for people with cardiac problems. This is to help them with that. And this is, you've had studies, I understand, done with people who are in their 90s showing how they're building muscle mass. So so I think that's a huge difference is that I don't see if there, and correct me if I'm wrong, any contraindications with the katsu bands. Well, that is the reason why we took the most vulnerable population, so older patients who had a cardiac issue, you know, heart attack, uh, uh, a stroke, um, different surgeries um, of the heart, as our core research group. That is why Dr. Sato, who always saw Katsu as a vascular strengthening modality, he took that premise, studied it for 10 years, I was part of that from 2004 to 2014. For 10 years, the total number of people that we studied was over 12,000 people. Hmm. 
Now they range from you know young twenties uh, to thirties, but the bulk of the people are over the age of fifty. So we took the the most vulnerable population, and of that vulnerable population, we took people who had cardiac issues. Therefore, we always had to be gentle and safe. Those mm -hmm. that was what we started with. We have to be gentle and safe in order to achieve certain purposes. And so we couldn't have what we call the constant mode. So just have the inflated bands. We actually had 30 seconds of pressure on and that pressure, very importantly, and this is the, the core to uh, the, the technology and the core of the patent is that pressure incrementally, very incrementally increases as you go along, let's say a, a typical set, if as we define it, is about five minutes. And that very incrementally goes up in pressure. So 30 seconds of gentle pressure, five seconds off. 30 seconds of slightly more pressure uh, and, and then continues. This allows the vascular tissue to expand very, very incrementally like we, when you're blowing up a balloon when you're blowing up a balloon you can't just blow it up immediately or mm -hmm. we would mm -hmm. equate that to the constant mode we do it very very slowly and this is safe and effective especially for people who are older or, or have vulnerable um, or are vulnerable in some health way so when i started to research vfr and try to learn more about it you go to YouTube and you Google a bunch of stuff right. and all of these bodybuilders came up and using BFR bands and trying to gain muscle and get that extra edge. There were two camps. There was those people. And then there were the people in rehab and trying to help people um, regain their muscle or not lose their muscle mass. So I know we do, there's, we're going to talk a little bit more about all the other benefits, but it sounds like this started out with, um, the rehab sort of world, but how did it fall into the bodybuilding world and muscle building world? Yeah. Dr. Sato in the Japanese and part of this 22nd century project was actually forecasting the demographics of Japan, which is the most rapidly aging population in the world. And so the most rapidly aging population in the world, you need to focus on people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and over 100 years old. That was the focus. And so we had to make things not only safe and gentle, we had to make things practical. We, we know that the average 75-year-old is not going to go to the gym and start pumping iron. <laughs> now, that being said, because in our oldest user to date is 104 years old. We demonstrated definitively through all kinds of testings in the hospital that this 104 year old woman gained significant muscle mass. So the whole idea of sarcopenia is the assumed degradation or loss of muscle mass. And we have proven even at 104 years old, you can gain muscle mass without lifting weights. Now, that being said, if we can get 90 and 100 year olds to gain muscle, the sports world, including bodybuilders, knew, whoa, wait a second, we need to be a part of this. So if you can imagine a, a, a football player, either American style or the world style, um, basketball players, you name the sport, developing their muscles either to run long or run fast, jump high or jump long, development of the muscle is a very critical part of that. So athletes and coaches are very astute and always looking for an edge. So as we were enabling 80, 90, and people over 100 gain muscle, gain strength, gain functional strength, gain balance, gain agility, and we're talking about people who had strokes, we're talking about paraplegics, we're talking about amputees, we're talking about disabled people. If we can get those populations to be stronger, more functional, et cetera, athletes and coaches knew, well, what does a young, fit, able body athlete can do? So they use the same principles 
as our older populations, they just use it for swinging a, a tennis racket, swinging a golf club, running fast down the track, swimming uh, fast down uh, the length of a pool. So that's how we sort of, we have two very, very different uh, major populations, older, weaker, um, less able to move around. And the finest athletes in the world, the finest soldiers in the world who are looking for that edge. So, but they use the same equipment. They use the same protocols. They just have it a little different pressures, a little different durations, a little bit of mo different movements. And are they getting same results in terms of percentage of how, how are the younger ones building it faster than the older ones or uh, is it about the same? Actually, the weaker, the more feeble you are, the faster your growth of, of improvement. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you're an Olympian. The difference between a gold medal and a silver medal in many cases is, is tenths of seconds or hundreds of seconds. So for the, the older people or a soldier, the, these individuals only need it. They're, they're only looking for that incremental improvement. You can't get a 100-meter dash runner to have a, a significant mm -hmm. leap in, in speed he or she only needs a very small uh, increase. And since the younger athletes, the, the most physically capable people on the planet are already using the most sophisticated techniques and training modalities in the world, for cuts to get them just a little bit better than competition, that's enough. And therefore, they're using katsu in the totality of their training, whereas we take your 75 year old and he or she is not going to the gym. He or she does not have uh, very uh, experienced coaches and trainers and nutritionists and, and other people who help them uh, prepare. That individual usually is either living alone or with their spouse or partner. And so we had to create some sort of equipment that was easy to do, easy to understand, easy to put on, easy to turn off, easy to turn on. And so that's that was our engineering goal. But the, the equipment and protocols are the same. Mm, super interesting. And 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 that incremental, that very small d difference in an athlete, for example, would be the difference between a gold and a silver, right? It's quite yes. important for that people. But yeah. in terms of other populations, when when we spoke earlier, I asked you who are the people who are using the katsu bands the most? Like, what are the demographics? Do you remember what you said? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, outside of the military, our mm -hmm. civilian population is about seventy percent, a little over seventy percent women, mm -hmm. and of that seventy percent, another seventy percent are women over the age of fifty. So, about half of all Katsu users worldwide are women over the age of 50. And really our core is that 55 to 75 year old age group. And it's amazing as it, we're, we're in 49 different countries. Um, I speak with people all over the world on a daily basis or exchange email. That 55 to 75 year old female population seems to me to be the most knowledgeable and most concerned about their physical well-being and health. They are, you know, I can take a husband and wife, roughly the same age, and the woman knows exactly <laughs> what is ailing her, what to do for her, whereas that her spouse or partner is like, ah, okay, whatever. I'll just accept <laughs> the situation. And our, our poor market here, they do not accept the situation. They want everything to get better. They want to age gracefully. They don't want to become more feeble as they go. Whereas I see a lot of men just accept the fact that they won't be as feeble. They'll be more feeble as they go older. Hmm. We always tell our users, wherever you are, whatever you are on your, your chronological age, if you're 45, 55, 65, if you're 35, our goal is for you to improve your strength, mobility, agility, balance, et cetera, 10 years from now. So wherever you are at 55, we want you to actually get better, stronger, 
when you're 65. If you're 35, same with 45. If you're 45, same with 55. That is our goal. And with Katsu, we can get it done. It's such a great goal. And I think a, a lot of our listeners here are women <laughs> in their 50s. And and we do ha we have this mentality. We do want to be better, bigger, stronger, more fit as we age, so that we can do all the things. And and you know we are living longer. So if we are going to live longer, we want to be in a better condition. And on top of that, you know I think if, if you've been watching the riots in France lately and and increasing the the um, retirement age by a couple of years, and there's it's you're going to wind up having to work whether you like it or not, or if you want to or not. So if you're going to be working, you, you need to be more agile, more fit and, and in, in a better condition. So I think it's really behooves us to, to take care of our health, um, whether we like it or not. Yeah. But yeah. when I first discovered the BFR, um, there were two, two, the two problems in the gerontologist and me that thought could really help the aging population. And we discussed some of this and, you know, it was, it was you know, building muscles. So, um, in a more realistic and a sustainable way in a population that just either couldn't or wouldn't lift heavy weights, um, to get really those, those adaptations in, in building muscle. And for some, it's because they don't have access to heavy weights or a trainer or afraid of injury or just don't know, right? Like you've mentioned. And I then thought about those people who, who need surgery or time off training, perhaps like because of uh, an injury or an illness, but will lose that muscle mass quickly, putting them more at risk for frailty and, and falls, et cetera. And personally, I started using the, the katsu bands in, in during the last month or so, mostly because my training has come to a near grinding halt and I'm waiting to get a hold of medication for hip osteoarthritis and it's taking longer than I thought. So I was like, okay, um, you know, I, and I've been told not to do any intensive exercise as I usually do. So I got worried that I'm going to lose muscle mass, which can happen so, so quickly, especially as we, as we get older. And so I got, I was, you know, the bands are here. I got them. I use them for about 10 or 20 minutes a day while on my computer, not even during, you know, my rehab training. And then after four weeks, not only did I not lose any muscle mass, but I gained um, almost 1%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but considering I was pra practically sedentary, I think it's amazing. So let's discuss like why it's so important to maintain muscle mass as we age and why women particularly going through menopause, find it so hard to build and maintain muscle and, and how can Katsu help this? Yeah. So, I mean, you, you have your practical reasons and you have your physiological reasons. Your practical reasons are everything from opening a, a jar. Um, it's everything from carrying um, heavy groceries. It's everything from, uh, you know, having the strength to you know, shovel snow or rake leaves. I mean, the ability to scratch your back, wash your hair. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why you want to maintain the agility and functional strength of, of the body. And that's the beauty of katsu. So as you saw, you don't have to actually do push-ups or burpees or lift weights with katsu to gain strength or maintain strength. You can do normal things. And this is what we teach that core grammar demographic of aging female body uh, uh, baby boomers. And that is when you're at your house, when you're in, when you're traveling, when you're in the office, do normal things. We call it double stacking. So in other words, if you're typing emails, if you're folding clothes, if you're, um, you know, a, carrying a, 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 a a bag of groceries, whatever you're doing. If you're reading a book, literally reading a book, you're holding the book in, you know, in front of your eyes, your, your body is in an isometric hold, basically. You're holding the book, you're turning the pages. That is an ideal time to be using katsu in order to build shoulder and uh, arm strength, an ideal time. Any kind of micro movements, and that it, micro movements I would define as you know, typing on a keyboard, um, uh, playing the guitar, um, knitting, um, writing a letter. All of these things are the perfect time, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, putting on makeup. These are ideal time to be using katsu. 
So those that's the practical aspect of, of katsu. The physiological aspect of katsu is when you have an engorgement of blood, either in the arms or legs, what is actually happening is you're literally using more muscle fibers than you would if you didn't have the bands on. So in other words, if I have the bands on and the katsu machine is going, you're engorging the limbs and blood. And when it's engorged, instead of, let's say, you're, you're lifting something without the bands on, let's say you're using 90% of your muscle fibers. With, with the engorgement of the small, small capillaries in the body, now you're upwards to 70, uh, I'm sorry, 97, 98%. And we have to consider the anatomy of the human body. If we opened up the human body and took all the vascular tissue that we had, so all of those capillaries and veins and arteries, and we'd line them up end to end, they would literally circle the earth two times. That's how much vascular wow. tissue we have. And when we have the bands on the on arms or our legs, we are actually exercising literally the that vascular tissue. So what is that doing? That is enabling this very healthy part of the of the human body, the, the muscle mass, in addition to your bone and ligament to a lesser degree. But we've got a lot of muscle mass. We keep that part of of that component of the human body healthy and strong. That is going to have an overall positive, very, very long-term benefit to us. So there, those are the two practical reasons. You know, I think when people, if you're listening in your fifties or sixties, you can't imagine your life as an older person, not being able to open a jar or lift a bag of groceries because we're young and we're fit or we're healthy. We're, we can do these things now, but it's, it's hard to imagine, but that is it happens and it's, it's scary and people are afraid of, of getting older and that happening. And it just does happen. So that's why it's so important to take care of your health and maintain muscle mass. And that's why I think these, the katsu bands are just really, really ideal, especially for people who've never exercised in their life, but to, to keep this and, and in our daily life, this is what I was so happy because I, I started, I wish I started earlier, but I started when I really, really needed it, and I'm I'm quite amazed with with the results. And so now my next step is to keep my do my rehab and bring them with me to the gym or when I'm doing my exercises and and measure then how much more I'm actually going to gain and my expectations are are actually I'm going to gain more when I'm at and when I'm doing some sort of um, uh, squat or or lift or something with my arm. Is, am I assuming correctly, or do you think it's not going to make a, a huge difference? Oh, it will make a massively huge difference. Um, oh, cool. We, we don't always use the word exercising with katsu. Mm -hmm. I prefer to use the word movement. So it yeah. doesn't matter if you are lifting dumbbells or lifting, you know, a, a water bottle. Uh, we want you to move with katsu. That movement itself is activating the muscle fibers. And so, you know, in your rehab, which is a very focus, which are very focused movements, which are enabling you to improve those injured body parts or those parts that maybe not are, are as good as they were 10 years previously, that's ideal. So whether we're working with a stroke patient, uh, uh, someone who is dis disabled, we always ask him, what do you want to do if, if, you, if you have a stroke? Do you want to be able to write? Do you all want to be able to use chopsticks? Do you want to be able to put on mascara? We actually do that with the bands on. We actually, mm -hmm. if a person says, I, I want to use chopsticks again, or I want to, I want to be able to cut my, my food, we literally take a fork and, and knife and do that. We literally ask them to bring their makeup and have them attempt to do that. Now, in the beginning, it might be difficult for that person who is recovering from something, but we're teaching the body how to make that movement that will improve their quality of life. So in your case, you're going to be going to rehab. You're going to want to focus on those body parts, those movements. 
with the cuts bands, it will you will see a massive improvement. Hmm. Well, I've yeah, I've already yeah, it, it's had some great feedback from others who've been using katsu bands and during their training, and I see them posting and and their friends of mine as well and people I know, and and they have seen incredible results. So I'm I'm super excited to to continue this journey with the bands and especially the through menopause when we lose estrogen, which is our our pillar, which is makes it much easier to build muscle. And when that's going away, it's much harder. And so if you are looking to build muscle and, and, and I know a lot of women who, who, when I share some information of my or fo- photos or videos of myself, pushing it at the gym, I'm really pushing it hard. And a lot of people say, I'm not going to do that, or I don't want to do that. It's too painful. It's going beyond, you know, what I'm ready to do. So the Katsu bands are a perfect, uh, perfect solution for them. Because like I said, some people cannot or do not want to, to do that. And some people just, it's, it's a fantastic way. And especially knowing that we can do it while we're doing other the, you know, activities of daily living. It's just, it's so, so easy. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the the beauty aspects to this, because this was so surprising to me. So women of certain age, we are concerned about changes in in our skin, for example. And you mentioned that katsu can help help our skin look more youthful. How, How is that? How is that even possible? So we first noticed this um, early on when we had a lot of, when working with a lot of surgery patients who had undergone surgery. So the surgeon had opened up, you know, some part of their body, usually near a joint, a shoulder, elbow, wrist, knee, hip, ankle. And when we would do katsu, the healing process of the, of the skin that was cut open would improve. It would improve so much that we would tell the surgeon or the patient would tell the surgeon, I'm doing katsu post-surgery. Well, initially the surgeon said, oh, okay, what is that? Now we know if you're doing katsu post-surgery, that the skin will grow over the cut location, the laceration very, very quickly. So the surgeon has to remove the sutures, the stitches faster Hmm. because what the surgeon doesn't want to do is he doesn't want the skin to completely grow over the sutures and then have to open it up Hmm. and possibly uh, infection. So we Hmm. saw that early on and figured, wow, katsu is, is helping just as it helps the muscle. It actually helps the skin uh, uh, return back to normal, if you will. So we took that and we, then we did a variety of testing and we wanted to prove that Katsu had systemic benefits because we were working with some amputees. They didn't have two arms. They didn't have two legs. And so we were using Katsu on one arm or one leg, et cetera, et cetera. And we saw this crossover, this systemic effect in that if they only had one arm and we, you know, we were only working with the right arm, although they had a stump on their left arm, we saw the muscle improving on the, the residual mm-hmm. limb, their stump. So that made us thinking, well, what is happening above the band? So I have the bands on, you have the bands on. What is happening above the bands? And we, we learned through work with uh, half MRI machines that we were actually stimulating capillary growth above the limb. What does that do? That means that if someone has a broken rib, a broken clavicle, we could actually help that too. Now, what does that mean? Well, we all know, especially men, uh, but women also, let's say we're shaving a man, he shaves, he he nicks himself and blood quickly. uh, emerges. Women, if you cut your face, heaven, you know, you know, it's mm-hmm. terrible when that happens. You have an accident, you're a young, young woman, you cut your face, you know, you're you're quite concerned. But we know that there is a lot of capillaries underneath our skin on our face. A lot. We bleed quite easily, whether you know we we might uh, I don't know, cut our lip or something. 
So what we do and what we, we coined katsu beauty is we put the bands on the upper arms. We actually, you can go in front of a mirror or you could do any number of, of jaw exercises and you literally say the vowels, at least in the English language. So <laughs> A, E, I, O, U, as you're doing the bands. Now, this is not, it is, you know, I'll repeat, they're not going to eliminate wrinkles. <laughs> that 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 is just unfortunately that that isn't an outcome but what we're doing is we're creating more elastic uh more elasticity in the capillaries underneath the skin itself mm. and that can only be a helpful thing now we have a lot of estheticians here in the in california and, and across the united states who swore up and down that would not be the case those women are now some of our most passionate <laughs> advocates because they've seen it itself when they know especially as you're saying you know the women are losing estrogen they're losing uh, uh, all kinds of things they're losing elasticity of your skin very true but if you make the underlying capillaries as elastic as possible again it's not going to eliminate uh, wrinkles but it will make the outer layer as 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 nice as it it can be and so my wife for example every night without a without failure you know when she is preparing for bed you know she's brushing her teeth she's taking off her makeup she also has her bands on a e i o u <laughs> there's various little uh machines they have in japan you put it between you you, you uh, put it in between your teeth and they, they're like, I call them jaw dumbbells. They go back and forth, up and down, they rotate. And so you're gripping on this uh, jaw dumbbell. You're actually exercising the, uh, the muscles of the face and under the uh, uh, neck. So whether you're doing, you know, head rotations, back and forth, or simply doing some stretching, uh, this is... These are the protocols of Katsu Beauty. And other than Katsu walking, Katsu Beauty is, is one of our most popular protocols. Okay, I'll take elastin. Yeah, definitely. Droopy jowls and and, and uh, the folds in our face. I would love to, to keep that. So I've got a new routine in the evening with my, my Katsu bands. I thought it was, I thought you were going to say something about human growth hormone because- uh, that's what I understand is some of the principles of, of BFR training and then perhaps that boosts collagen or something. Actually, there's there's something even more profound. Human growth hormone is uh, one of the primary uh, molecules that is given off uh, when you do movement with katsu, without a doubt. But there are other things. We, we have tested 480 different biomarkers in the human body. Two in particular would be of interest to women or anybody who wants to improve their the appearance of their skin. And one is a plasmologen and one is a ceramide. And we, we definitely uh, showed what we did was a testing in Northern California. And what we did was we took a vial of blood from uh, volunteers. We had them do katsu for between 15 and 20 minutes. Then we waited and we took a vial of blood after, and we compare those two vials of blood. And this is where we started. The chemist said, oh, wow, look at this improvement and look at that improvement. And that's when we identified these two molecules in particular that help actually um, repair cell walls or maintain the health of, of cell walls. And so I had no idea that these thing, these elements even um, existed. And this is why we always go out. We always love to work with very intelligent people, people with specialty knowledge, and we allow them to uh, discover new things of katsu. And it was very interesting with that particular um, experiment we did was we did three different types of katsu. We did what I call just sedentary katsu. So the first time we took a vial of blood, we just sat there and let the machine work, no movement. The second time, and these were separated by two or three weeks, the second time we took those volunteers 
And we had them do moderate movement. So we took a vial of blood, had them do moderate movement, and then took a vial of blood. And those we would just do what I call air biceps and air uh, uh, tricep uh, extension, some squats without weights. The third time we took a vial of blood and we had the volunteers do very vigorous movement. We had them running up a hill. We had them do push-ups. We had to do burpees. And then we took a vial of blood. We took those differences. So sedentary uh, katsu, moderate movement with katsu, and then vigorous exercise with katsu. Remarkably, and this was surprising to us too, the differences between these three types of katsu was not significant, was, was relatively insignificant. The, the, the come away from that was, well, who, who prefers to do vigorous exercise, running uphill burpees and pushups, if they could get 80% of the benefit doing <laughs> moderate course. movement or sedentary katsu? Yeah. And so that actually proved the original premise of katsu in that we can help the more sedentary population, the more sedentary aging populations. They're not going to be running up a hill. They're not mm -hmm. going to be doing burpees. But if we can get them 80% of the way there and they do it frequently, meaning daily, after a year, they are going to be in very good shape. And mm -hmm. therefore, that 10-year goal 10 years from now, we want you to be better, stronger, faster, more fit, more vascularly healthy than you are now. That is what we're aiming for all of our um, users to do, to achieve. It's amazing. I, I, it's like just more, more confirmation why, why I like the band so much. But so is there a release of, of human growth hormone when we do the katsu? Is that proven or... Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we, that was actually one of our, I, that was actually our first paper that was published in a, in a scientific journal back in the year 2000 in the journal of applied physiology. And there we, uh, we found the uh, secretion of human growth hormone secretion of IGF one or insulin growth factor and a variety of other uh, uh, molecules, uh, hormones, a hormone, et cetera. Um, what was most interesting is subsequent to that, I don't remember the exact year, 2005 to 2006, most probably, is that that's when we found there was actually a slight delay in the, in the maximum release or production of human growth hormone. So what we did was we took a bunch of volunteers, we had them do katsu, and then we measured, uh, we took blood samples, minute blood samples, every minute thereafter. And we found the peak uh, hormonal release was about 12 to 15 minutes after katsu. So you do katsu, mm -hmm. and then 12 to 15 minutes, there is a peak in that the amount of hormone that is released. So what does that mean? That means that now we advise professional athletes, Olympic athletes, people are making presentations. If you want to perform when your hormone is at a, a maximum production level. Hmm. So if you're going to make a speech, if you're going to go up on the Olympic starting blocks, if you're going to a professional and you're going to play a game, you want to be doing katsu about 10 to 15 minutes before you, ex you want to achieve your peak performance. And so oh, wow. that's what we have. We have Olympians in the ready room before they go up to the Olympic final doing katsu. Uh, because they know that they want to be hormonally maximized or optimized for their performance. Same thing, I, you know, I tell uh, our younger people, if you're going to, if you're going to do a marriage proposal, do katsu right before. If, <laughs> if I tell our college, college men and women, and we were in about 80 universities in the United States, if you're going to go on a date on Friday night, before you knock on that uh, 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 woman's uh, door, before the women uh, woman uh, knows that her date is coming, do katsu. You want that first impression we all know is so very important. So you want to be hormonally optimized at that point. And you could see the college students, their eyes just light up. <laughs> what a great idea. So, and I think 
when we get to women get to around the age of 50, we, I know several people who go into injecting themselves with human growth hormone. And I don't think that's a good idea. So this, you know, getting, getting optimizing your hormones this way through the katsu bands is, is much safer and it's natural and you're not injecting anything. And, um, so, you know, please uh, don't inject yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what, you know, the, the human growth hormone is, is produced by our pituitary gland, which is right behind our eyeball. Our brain is such a wondrous, incredible thing. Our brain you know, with, with some, with some exceptions, if you have some terrible disease, but our brain is so intelligent, it will only produce the optimal amount of human growth hormone when we're doing katsu. Mm -hmm. And so it won't overproduce, it won't underproduce, it's producing exactly what you're asking or expecting the body to do. And this is why when I, you know, talked to, uh, there was just a young man about a month ago, he told me, he was going to uh, propose to his fiance and or propose to a woman. And he, you know, I said, you got to do katsu. He goes, Oh, I know, I know. I'm so <laughs> ready. He had his whole day planned out and he had the katsu 15 minutes before he was going to uh, ask her the question. And so, um, you know, this kind of, of knowledge about what the human body does, its mechanisms, its anatomy, is actually very critical for the fundamental understanding of katsu. And when you have that fundamental understanding, then you utilize katsu to optimize for whatever your goals are. There's so much we can do with it. I'm I'm so impressed. I I another thing that really surprised me was in a in a recent podcast I did with Dr. Dale Bredesen, who is the um he's a researcher and a doctor of neurodegenerative neurodegenerative diseases. He wrote the book um The End of Alzheimer's and he mentioned, and actually it's in the in the book, um, The First Survivors of Alzheimer's. I remember reading one of the survivors were using um katsu bands and and he said, yeah, some of the patients use katsu bands as part of their protocol. And women are nearly twice as likely as men to develop Alzheimer's. So this is a you know, real concern to us. How can Katsu help people with Alzheimer's or help prevent dementia or neurodegenerative diseases at all, if at all? Yes. So uh, the very first person who was on our board of advisors was Dr. Peter Lansbury. He's a specialist in Parkinson's. And he was very interested in Katsu because exercise, even before the onset of any neurological diseases, exercise is so critical. And it's especially critical after the, the you have this diagnosis and, and prognosis going forward. And so but you know, you have Alzheimer's, you have Parkinson's, etc. One of the easiest things to forego or forget for not do is actually exercise. And what uh, all of these very knowledgeable, far forward thinking um, physicians and researchers know that if we can have something like katsu be very gentle and easy to do, and especially be able to do it when you're sedentary, this will absolutely help those with neurological diseases. And so quite often, we uh, speak with either the, the spouse or the caregiver or the partner of, of people who are going through these, these terrible diseases. And again, just like wrinkles, it's not going to stop it. It's not going to prevent it. It's not going to cure it. But exercise, which is, such as a which is such a critical part of the treatment of all these diseases, can be very easily accomplished with katsu sitting down, reading a book or watching TV or simply talking, have it on your, have it on your legs while you're sitting down. If you're going to walk across the room and, and do something, that is another time to do it. Just walking around the house. Um, you know, again, in the course of your normal day, you could be using katsu. It, we're not even calling it exercise. Hmm. We're just calling it movement with these bands on. And it is, it can be a game changer. And I think, you know, the doctor understands that and he sees that and he sees the patient's, um, um, you know, increase or improved quality of life and, and, you know, proof is in the pudding. 
I was going to think maybe it would be with uh, something to do with blood flow to the brain. Uh, and I guess that's what exercise does too. So is, is that because we, if, and there is, I guess, wearing them on your arms, if you're concerned about dementia or you're going through some neurodegenerative diseases is probably the optimal place, or does it not matter whether you do your legs or your arms? Well, the, um, gosh, this is a, a, a study we did probably 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. What we did was we took older women, uh, 12 of them. We put bands around their legs. Um, we did the cut cycle. So pressure on pressure off. And then we measured the blood flow in their forehead. We also did uh, a EEG um, uh, test. And we saw that the increased alpha wave activity with katsu on their legs. We also did in the arms, but the legs, one, one reason we want to do legs is they're just generally more muscle mass down there. Um, and therefore, if you have a choice between arms and legs, in general, if you're going to be doing it every day, you'll get a little more bang for your buck. You'll be a little more um, activity on, on your legs. Also, especially for people who have these uh, terrible diseases, they're generally using their legs more than their arms. So they're walking around the house or they're getting up and out of a chair. So just that getting up and out of a chair is a very good exercise. It, it is basically a squat. They're not going to be doing too much with their arms, relatively speaking. They might be picking up a can or, or, or coffee cup to drink, but really getting up and down out of a chair, walking around the house, uh, doing various things. If they're going to work, uh, putting them on the leg bands is is a very uh, excellent way. You can put them on the arms if the person is so motivated to do either micro movements. Um, but uh, either way is fine because of the systemic effect. And we saw that with increased capillary activity in the, in the brain, I mean, improved blood flow. And then also with the measurement of alpha waves, the increase there. And we saw that with testing with people who, uh, researchers that work with the Department of Defense and traumatic brain injury patients. Okay. So let's talk briefly because we got to wrap this up. I want to share people what, how the bands work and what they're all about. What about anyone who has chronic pain or osteoarthritis? I'm going to be a little selfish here. Um, how, cause other than say building muscle mass, but you know, we have this sort of inflammation that's happening. That's kind of out of control. How can cut two bands help with that? So it, in those cases, we, three basic things, one, um, start off very, very low pressure and build up. So anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes would be ideal. Do it frequently, meaning at least once a day. If, if you have the opportunity, do it twice a day. And then three, do body weight exercises. Now, body weight exercise doesn't necessarily mean a push-up. It can mean simple walking. Walk around the block, walk with your dog, just just walk walk wherever you can with the bands on. That ambulatory movement is very, very good with katsu because it's putting pressure on the musculoskeletal system. And so you want that work. I mean, you can do bicep curls, you can do stretching, of course, um, but everything from yoga to walking would be ideal for bone health with katsu. Ah, it's bone health, yeah. D does it reduce pain? Ah, so with pain, one of the, um, uh, we, we call it C-reactive protein is one biomarker, and we see it most often with amputees. So amputees have neuropathic pain, phantom pain, a variety of other pains. We And because we work uh, so much with the American military, unfortunately, we have, we work with a lot of amputees. And those amputees use katsu more than any other group we have there. Reason why is they're in constant pain. Their, their pain is off the charts. And unfortunately, usually the, the people who become amputees in the military are usually our strongest, fittest, you know, bravest individuals. And they have grit that's off the chart. And we know when they're in tremendous pain, 
that pain is unfathomable to to most of us mere mortals. And when they are putting on the bands and they see that their uh, neuropathic pain is falling uh, uh, significantly, significantly mean I got a pain of 10 out of 10 and now it's a three out of 10, that helps a lot of people, you know, uh, reduce their medication, reduce their their dependency on alcohol or illicit drugs. And so this C-reactive protein is, is a marker. It changes with katsu. We, we've demonstrated that. And then we see it most practically with people uh, like an amputees who or people who are disabled and they're dealing with back pain or a knee pain or some kind of joint pain. And these are the people who very much use katsu as, as Dr. Sato first envisioned. Whereas, you know, you're just using it in the course of your day in a sedentary position, pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. And you're, you're, you're incorporating it into your lifestyle. These people are incorporated into their lifestyle because they just see the pain mitigation benefits of katsu. And so, but if you have a sprained ankle or, you know, you accidentally bump the, you know, your shoulder against the wall or something, it can also help there. Now, when you have uh, some pain on one side or the other, we always advocate doing what we call single limb katsu. So if I have hit my elbow and I've got a, uh, you know, a, a bruise and it, it, it's painful to me, in these cases, I would actually only use the band on the injured limb. Again, start off very, very uh, light pressure, very gentle pressure, and gradually go up in 15 to 30 minute intervals. Mm. So then if somebody has, I guess, if they have an injury or osteoarthritis in the hip or knee or ankle, or then they would use the the, the bands for the legs. And if they have a shoulder or a, an injury in, in their in the upper body, then they would use the arm bands. And then of course, if it's just, you know, the, or the one, the one limb, that's is that yeah. the protocol more that, or less, right? That is that is generally true. <clears throat> However, mm -hmm. because all uh, many of our patients are older, some patients just don't have the manual dexterity <laughs> to put on the bands themselves. You know, especially a stroke patient. You know, one mm -hmm. side or the other, it it's impossible for them to do this on one side. Mm -hmm. It's easier for them, for example, to put on their leg bands, etc. So there's mm -hmm. always exceptions. Uh, to the rule. And because we're dealing with an older, generally an older population or a younger population that's injured, like the soldiers, we have different protocols because you have four opportunities, left and right arm, left and right leg. We have four opportunities to help affect change in the body. Great. There's one question here we have from our guest. If my ferritin is low, can katsu bands uh, will they help gain muscle anyways? Um, it, I, I assume low is really low. Uh, if, if that is the question, yes. And in this case, change doesn't happen overnight. Change will happen over an extended period. Um, probably, you know, we're talking three to nine months, uh, depending. And again, you don't have to do um, a certain exercise. And then we also have to consider we're not just looking at the muscle fiber itself. We're looking at the capillaries that are infused within the muscle. And so if you consider this um, concept of katsu, the, the muscle uh, fibers will actually help um, or, or be, will be augmented by the increased elasticity of the capillaries that are infused within the muscle itself. And I can imagine now there'll probably be a lot of other other benefits too. Um, this, so okay, let's 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 show how these katsu bands are are like and and um, you know you and I are both wearing them. They're very very. They've got this uh, Velcro, easy to put on. And you have, at least I have, I know you have different models, which I'd like you to talk about because I have the one with um, the C3 that has the, the tubes. I just put this on my 
hook it, hook it on my, my exercise pants. And then I turn them on. And like you said, it's super, super simple. There's just this simple function where it asks you, you know, I say cycle mode, you can say arms and then I keep it low, how many sets and that's it. And then if you're listening to the podcast, you can hear them pumping up and that's the 30 second pump. And then there's the, then it goes down and then for five seconds release, but that's generally how it works. That's what it looks like. Um, but you also have the other models. So maybe you could talk about the difference, the differences between the different models. Yeah. So, so the, the particular model you have, what we call the Katsu C3, that was, we had a previous model and then we actually were working with uh, American Navy SEALs, uh, elite forces in, in the United States. And they made some very, very um, astute and simple changes. So that that model there, we have a lot of we have a lot of our Navy SEAL uh, users to thank for its usability and ease of use. Um, the uh, difference between that model and uh, our current latest model is simply um, the model has no tubes. So in your case, you know, I have a, a set of tubes that, mm -hmm. you know, you see here. Now we have a model that has no tubes. Amazing. Um, <laughs> that is important for, for various reasons. One, uh, we eliminate any um, uh, trip possibilities. Sometimes uh, if a, a person is disabled, uh, they're in a wheelchair, uh, these tubes can get in the way. And our, our physicians who work with an older population, uh, people who are in the VA hospitals in the United States, other places where we're concerned that these tubes can hook on a doorknob or somehow hook on a wheelchair or a cane, a walker, et cetera. So we eliminated that. And now with this new version, what happens is there's a pump inside here, just like your unit there. And that is driven by a, an app. And that app now controls the unit. You tell ex you tell the unit exactly what to do. And so let's say you had an injury on one side versus the other. You can actually put two different pressures at the same time on both limbs. Hmm. In addition, you can share all of your data because it is an app with your healthcare provider or with a coach, your trainer, your, your spouse, your partner, your teammate, et cetera. And so when, when all the information that's included in your C3 is now up in the cloud, it enables a community to develop. It also enables us to, um, over time, know the average 55-year-old woman is using the, the unit from this pressure to that pressure. They're using an average of 17 minutes a day, et cetera. So when we have new users, we can tell them, oh, you're, you're 55 years old, you're a semi-active individual. This is the range of what our users do. So at least we're giving people very practical guidance given their age and their activity level or, or injury. And so the, the newest model, we just like everything. We're evolving over time. We're listening to customers around the world. And because the customers are, you know, all different from all different walks of life with all different needs and, and desires. We listen to them and we incorporate what uh, they want into the products. Uh, the principles are the same. The bands are the exact same, the width, the, the internal structure, et cetera. It's just the, uh, uh, the device, if you will, is, is evolving over time, making it smaller, making it app, et cetera. So, um, mm. It's a joy to work with everybody. Uh, you know, we'll we listen to you know complaints and testimonials alike, um, and there's truth in what everybody says. And so we take, we absorb it, and we try to engineer products and and uh, meet protocols that 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 addresses the needs of everybody. And you've got some great customer service too. <laughs> Every time I have a question, you're there helping me through it. And your website has a ton of resources as well and lots of YouTube videos. And, and I know, and I feel 
comfortable knowing that I can reach out to you and the company if I if I need something. So that's really, really valuable rather than just buying a pair of bands online and and then good luck with that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah, the the bands are not cheap. So you know, how much can someone expect to invest in in so the different the models? model you have is a thousand US dollars. Um uh, the mod, the current model that we have here is double that price. So they are expensive. Um, but you know, it, we always break it down. If, if you have a gym membership or you have to go to a physical therapy, uh, clinic twice a day, you've effectively eliminated those costs because now you could do rehab at your house. You still need the guidance of a professional physical therapist, of course, but you you can actually do physical therapy at your home. You can actually work out at your home or in the office or you know while you're traveling. So if you look at the total cost, um, it's not that much per day. But then again, we we didn't do anything. We didn't launch outside of Japan until we did a ten year study with a group of very. Um, uh, esteemed cardiologist for 10 years. We invested 10 years of a very, very intense, comprehensive uh, research project, which frankly, we could have stopped any time. Or if we had any problems, the Japanese medical community could have stopped us at any time. So we took a huge, uh, we had a lot of confidence, of course, but we actually invested um, a decade in of of research and product development before we sold one unit so um we're very uh, proud that we we stand by um all of the years of effort we do and it, it's you know uh it, it's something everybody in the company loves to do that's why I thank you very much for the customer service but we love to work with people and we love to help them achieve whatever goals they have for their own life Oh, I'm so glad you brought this in the world and, and really people need to know more about it. And I'm surprised how few people know what blood flow restriction is and all that. And I think it's as the population is aging, this is a real game changer and investing in your health is something I always promote. And uh, if you are considering this, there is a discount code of 10% using the code Zora. But before we let Stephen go, um, I'd like to open the mic uh, to anyone here who's listening live. If you have a question, you can unmute or you can, if you're shy, no pressure, you can also type in the comments. Um, I know, Claudia, you came a little bit late. If you have a bit of um, something to say, you're more than welcome or a question to ask or no. <laughs> It's up to you and Svetlana here as well. If you have a question, feel free to unmute. We asked to answer your question about ferritin. Sometimes it's searching. If, um, I just typed into the uh, uh, chat box. If people have a question, they can always email me at info at katsu.com. Mm -hmm. And a uh, question can be a variety of things. If you're working with a healthcare professional, whether it's a cardiologist, an internist, a podiatrist, you name it, they may have a very specific um, question. And we have the research. Uh, again, our first research paper was uh, published in two th the year 2000. So we have 23 years of published research out there. We have research ongoing from uh, China to the UK, from uh, 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 Japan to the Harvard Medical School. We've got projects and research going all over the place. So if there is something that uh, uh, worries you or concerns you, or you have a question, we most probably have an answer. We haven't, you know, uh, I, I get all kinds of questions with some diseases I've never heard about. Uh, we don't have a lot of experience in some of the very rare very rare uh, conditions that that the human species encounters. Um, so um, ask a question, have your healthcare prov provider ask a question, your therapist, your coach, your your friend, and uh, we'll get to you. 
um, with uh, the background and the questions that, that you want. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much. And last chance for questions. If you want, you have to unmute because we can't hear you if you have a question or type. And if not, okay. Well then, any last words that you have, Stephen, for a woman going through menopause? We have seen the most remarkable changes in women. And again, I start out um, with Dr. Sato with the purpose to help my aging parents. My mother is 86 years old. Um, she uses katsu two to three times a day. Um, uh, she is more fit now at 86 than she was at 76 and 66. Um, she is driving, she swims, she walks. She is really enjoying life. She's enjoying her grandchildren. And uh, this is the kind of person that I want to help. This is, this is our mission. Our mission is to help people age gracefully, healthfully, and enjoyably. And uh, we're committed to this every single day. And thank you very much for the opportunity to share, you know, our mission, the way we do it, our equipment and the protocols. Um, because we don't advertise, we, we focus on what we do best, which is research, um, making new products or making uh, improved products and um, helping people reach their goals. Oh, thank goodness you you did this. If anybody wants more information, I, I'll include the email in the show notes. You're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You got your website, katsu, K-A-A-T-S-U dot com. All the links are in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here and sharing all the information. I think we need a part two because I still have a ton more questions. Have a good day. Thank you.